Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Friday, August the 28th. Today is the commemoration of Augustine of Hippo, pastor and theologian. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. For behold, the kings assembled. They came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic. They took to flight. Trembling took hold of them there, anguish as of a woman in labor. By the east wind, you shattered the ships of Tarshish. And we have heard, so we have seen, the city of the Lord of hosts in the city of our God, which God will establish forever. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Kings chapter 11. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart from after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashertroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not wholly follow the Lord, as David his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Moloch, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives, who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your practice, and you have not kept my covenant to my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of David your father I will not do it in your days, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of David my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem that I have chosen. And the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, and he was of the royal house in Edom. For when David was in Edom, and Joab the commander of the army went up to bury the slain, he struck down every male in Edom, for Joab and all Israel remained there six months until he had cut off every male in Edom. But Hadad fled to Egypt, together with certain Edomites of his father's servants, Hadad still being a little child. They set out for Midian and came to Paran, and took them with them from Param and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave them a house and assigned him an allowance of food and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave them him in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tafenis, the queen. And the sister of Tafenis bore him Genubeth, his son, whom Tosphenes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genubeth was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers and that Joab, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me depart, that I may go to my own country. But Pharaoh said to him, 
What have you lacked with me that you are now seeking to go to your own country? And he said to him, Only let me depart. God also raised up an adversary to him, Razan, the son of Eladiah, who fled from his master, Hadadazar, king of Zobah. And he gathered men around him and became leader of a marauding band after the killing by David. And they went to Damascus and lived there and made him king in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, doing harm as Hadad did. And he loathed Israel and reigned over Syria. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zeradah, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also lifted up his hand against the king. Our writing this morning is from St. Augustine of Hippo, from a book called Sermons on Selected Lessons of the New Testament. The prophet says, Come out from among them, and touch no unclean thing, Isaiah 52, 11. I also cry out and say to you, Come out from among them, and touch not the unclean thing, but with the touch of the heart, not of the body. For what is it to touch the unclean thing, but to consent in sin? And what is it to come out from among them, but to rebuke the wicked as far as can be done, according to each person's grade and condition, with the maintenance of peace? If you are displeased at a man's sin, then you have not touched the unclean thing. If you have reproved, rebuked, admonished him, and have administered, if the case required it, a suitable discipline that does not violate unity, then you have come out from among them. How many in vehement, vehement rebukes did Jeremiah preach against all the sinners and wicked ones of his people? Yet he lived among them, he entered into the same temple with them, celebrated the same mysteries, he lived in that congregation of wicked men, but by his preaching he came out from among them. This is what it means to come out from among them. This is what it means to not touch the unclean thing. It means not consenting to them in will and not sparing them in word. I say this of Jeremiah, of Isaiah, of Daniel, and of Ezekiel, and the rest of the prophets, who did not retire from that wicked people, lest they should desert the good who were mingled with that people. St. Augustine was one of the greatest of the Latin Church Fathers, and a significant influence in the formation of Western Christianity, including Lutheranism. Born in A.D. 354 in North Africa, August Augustine's early life was distinguished by exceptional advancement as a teacher of rhetoric. In his book Confessions, he describes his life before his conversion to Christianity, when he was drawn into the moral laxity of the day and fathered an illegitimate son. Through the devotion of his sainted mother Monica and the preaching of Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, who lived from 339 to 397, Augustine was converted to the Christian faith. During the great Pelagian controversies of the 5th century, Augustine emphasized the unilateral grace of God in the salvation of mankind. Bishop and theologian at Hippo in North Africa from 395 until his death in AD 430, Augustine was a man of great intelligence a fierce defender of the Orthodox faith, and a prolific writer. In addition to confessions, Augustine's book City of God had a great impact upon the church throughout the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. And I'd just add to that that uh, Martin Luther was an avid uh, reader of St. Saint Augustine, Augustine or Augustine, it doesn't matter which way you pronounce it. Uh, but Luther uh, also by nature, when he became a monk, he was uh, took his vows into the Augustinian order. So they're uh, the kind of the patron of the monastic order or the monastic uh, rules that he lived by were the ones set forth by St. Augustine. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as always on Friday, our Friday prayer <clears throat> excuse me, uh, focuses on Christ's passion. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot understand how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, and there, abandoned by all your disciples, you willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner and hung up between two evildoers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit so you could pay our debt and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain, we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. O Lord God, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, give us strength to follow the example of your servant Augustine of Hippo, so that knowing you we may truly love you, and loving you we may fully serve you, for to serve you is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.